So we uh, very impressive demos, by the way, uh, and we are on the other side of the spectrum uh, from the low code, no code side. So you would see how some of these things can be achieved with without writing much code. I don't know if, if that helps the audience here, but uh, so my name is Sabine Nair. I'm a product manager in the Dataverse team. Um, along with me, we also have Shafali and Nitin, and they'll introduce uh, as we go along. We have a couple of demos to show, just a couple of slides too. Uh, the we have a little bit for everybody. Uh, first of all, huge thank you to this audience, uh, like 210 right before Christmas. It's amazing. So really appreciate everybody taking the time. So we have a little bit for everybody. Um, we, I'm, I'm sure some people are new to Power Platform and Power Platform Connectors. So we'll have a little bit of, for them. Uh, we also will have a demo for the recently announced a Snowflake Power Platform Connector. Uh, that's gaining some uh, audience. Uh, we talked about Copilot. Uh, so you also saw a declarative agent. Uh, we'll, we'll have some demos of that with actions. Um, and of course, the certification piece. So to kind of wrap it up. So without any further ado, let me just get to a couple of slides and then we'll get straight to demos. This is one of our very popular slides that we use. Um, it's, uh, it's basically a, a huge thank you to the community here. Uh, of developers who are building connectors for us along with independent publishers. And we have a pretty thriving ecosystem, thanks to all of you, uh, 1,400 and counting. So these are all connectors, Power Platform connectors uh, that are being used historically for Power Platform. Uh, and when I say that, what I mean is you have Power Apps, Power Automate, uh, and now Copilot. And Essentially, just to give you a quick definition of what Power Platform connectors are, uh, it's basically a wrapper around an API. So if you have an API that you want to use as a connector uh, in, in any of these Power Platform, uh, that's what you build using our authoring uh, tools. Now, why connector? Uh, why the wrapper? Well, as I said, it's the low-code world, so uh, you have non-developers. Somebody asked me, like, you know, how do you best explain Power Platform? Uh, we often say it's low code, no code, and all these things. But I think in the, there used to be a very uh, popular article, I think in the Chronicle. I don't see it anymore. Uh, it's from Charles Lamana, uh, who, who runs his group. Uh, it was really good where it explained, like, you know, if the world had, like, I'm just making up this number, say, 100,000 developers uh, who create say 500,000 apps, but the world needs like maybe 5 million apps. So who's gonna do the Delta? So people who do not write code should be able to develop apps, create apps with very simple expression-like language. And that's where the Power Platform really shines. So as you saw earlier, you can do things in the pro code way. There's definitely benefits there, and I'll talk about that in a moment, uh, but there is, we are just trying to pull a community here who can uh, write, build apps without writing code. So again, back to the Power Platform connector, it basically enables you to call these connectors. Once you provide a wrapper, you can call these connectors without always writing code. So if you're a developer, you know how to deal with APIs, great. If you're not, you should just be able to call these connectors into your applications. And that's how these 1400 connectors came to be. Uh, in Power Apps, like popular connectors are like the Salesforce, uh, Freshdesk. Uh, there are some internal uh, connectors as well, Excel, like the first party connectors like Excel and SharePoint, which are extremely popular. Uh, obviously, you are using them in apps. You can also use them in workflows. Uh, you can have automated workflows, which basically works on a trigger. So you have a, uh, a record change, changes in a CRM system elsewhere, and then you want to drop an email or create an action based on that change. So these workflows is what Power Automate does. So uh, that's like a spectrum of like what Power Platform connectors are and basically the types. Now there are more specific types. For example, there are custom connectors. So all these connectors that I'm talking about is externally, uh, I need the WhatsApp connector, it's coming actually. So. Uh, I, uh, we, we are actually working very closely with them. So um, uh, what, what, what I was trying to say is like you have you may also have uh, proprietary databases within uh, your firm, within your company or the people you're helping out. 
And you don't always have to expose, make these connectors publicly available. You can easily write a custom connector. In fact, all connectors, when you start authoring, start off as custom. So you can very much write custom connectors, and that has a pretty big ecosystem as well. And Shafali might be able to throw some numbers there. So uh, there is another one. I mean, there are all these different flavors, but I don't want to bore with, with a number of types of connector. That is not the goal. We're just trying to, like, we're slowly kind of expanding uh, this ecosystem. The latest people may have picked up from Ignite was the Snowflake Power Platform connector, which is in public preview. That is slightly different, a more enhanced connector. Uh, we call it tabular connectors. Basically, when you have data sources, which are data sets, structured data, and you want to expose them in a very efficient way, uh, tabular connectors kind of come into the picture. We don't have a whole lot of them. We, there is a decent percentage of 1,400, which are tabular connectors. But we are also like trying to see we need to build a community around that. So expect a lot, a lot more documentation, self, uh, self learning, and kind of able to self serve and build these connectors. So uh, going moving forward, let's just get to a demo. We'll have Nathan from my team do a quick demo uh, uh, with the Dataverse and Snowflake uh, integration. Nathan, you want to take it away? Uh, yes. Uh, is everybody able to hear me? Yeah. OK, uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Sure. Let's play this. Yeah. OK, uh, let's say this is data from a pet adoption center where you see a table where you have the list of all the dogs up for adoption. In this table, you're able to see uh, different data like the name, breed, age, and whatnot. So let's say if I want to make any editing here, uh, like for ID number one, max, if I want to update the age and weight, the traditional way is to add an uh, SQL statement and then execute that. But with the Snowflake connector, uh, that is much easier. So all you have to do is, let's say you create an app and then you see the same data here in a table. So I can just go to the edit button and then update the age from eight to nine and then also update the weight. Uh, and once the update is done, just hit save and then it'll take a couple of seconds and then go back to your Snowflake, run the same query again. And then you'll be able to see the updated data. So with age nine and weight 92. So it's this simple that all you have to do is perform CRUD operation on your table. And then the way you do it is first come here, create a connection on uh, Snowflake. It's a service principle credential. Just add the required fields. And then once you have it, uh, create the connection. Once you create the connection, you can see it in the connections page. And then next step is to create a virtual table. And then uh, once you have the virtual table, just create a model driven app on top of it. It's that simple. Here you can make all the modifications. You'll see that in Snowflake in real time. All right, moving on. Uh, thanks, Nathan. So uh, with agents, uh, we, we saw some demos here, and I'll just quickly cover this one of the uh, good ways to get grounded on what agents are. And there are multiple types of agents. So historically, like uh, Microsoft has always put forward like their co-pilot. How do you extend these co-pilot for your own business needs, which is true like 95% of the time people want to customize it. Uh, if you look at this slide, look at it from a left to right kind of perspective. So you have declarative agents, which are more uh, more well defined, uh, customizable to some extent. You can you can write customizations of how it should behave in certain conditions, uh, but it has a set orchestrator behind the scenes. If you come on the right hand side, the custom engine agents is a lot more pro code. Uh, friendly, uh, very powerful because you can customize practically everything about it. There are a few custom engine agents already being written, so those are some good examples. And also, in, from, from a tooling perspective, uh, Copilot Studio is where you would build a declarative agent, again, without any code. And Visual Studio Code is where, along with Teams Toolkit, is where you would build some of these uh, custom engine agents. So let me show you a quick demo uh, of a declarative agent with using connectors as actions. Okay, so I have 
two declarative agents. I just thought, well, I run the command and one the other one, I can show the other one. So one of them is a sales agent, uh, which basically has using the Salesforce connector action. So I'm using a simple, so the experience is like you go add an action, you say Salesforce, and it will show you the list of Salesforce actions. So here you have all these. I'm choosing the get records uh, action uh, because I want to just list some records. And by the way, uh, somebody may have covered this before, but I'll just quickly go over it. The anatomy of an agent is, if you look at it, there are two parts, at least two parts, apart from the logo and everything. There's a knowledge part and there's an action part. So I'm not using any knowledge for this demo, but typically I think uh, uh, if people have seen previous demos as well, the knowledge is basically it's you're telling the co-pilot or you're telling the agent where to look for uh, how to ground your answers and what are the sources for that. And the action part is you're taking an action based on the uh, questions that you have asked based on the insights you've learned. So what I just showed you was a list of actions for all these 1400 connectors. And in this case, I'm using the Salesforce connector and I'm also using uh, the Outlook connector. So let's just run a quick command like get leads. Uh, so I want to get leads from Salesforce uh, and we expect it to come back with the, showing all the leads which I can filter um, as I want to. Or I could also take an action, further action of like taking all the leads and maybe drafting an email. So let me just copy paste something for you. All right, so this is the set of leads that I have in Salesforce that I'm getting it from an agent that I built. Uh, I can also write a command like, hey, get the leads and draft an email to me uh, with the subject as top leads. So let that run. And while that is running, I'll switch to another agent and show you something different. In this case, I'm using the fresh test. Again, I'll go to this, add an action, say fresh desk. And I have a few available actions from the connector of getting a ticket, creating a ticket. These are the two that I'm using here. So if I say get ticket, um, it requires an ID, so ID five. And this is just for quick purposes. Otherwise, I could have said get ticket and prompt me for the ID. I can give the ID to it. And in this case, I just wanted to say that, hey, uh, it's just listing the ticket ID from uh, Fresh Desk. So there you go. It's a plumbing repair um, ticket, and it has all the details with it. Now, what I can do is I can also create a ticket um, with something like by providing some details that, hey, the subject should be main door, the description should be repair main door. I could do that. And while I run that, I'll also quickly show you what this looks like in Fresh Desk. So you see that it just said one new ticket created. If I go there, uh, it just created the main door ticket with setting the priorities and other pieces accordingly. So this is just a quick demo to show what an action looks like in some of these agents. If I go back to the community, oh, I should have told it to send it. And it actually drafted an email to, to me, to Sabine, with the subject as top leads as, as I asked it. If you remember the command was get leads and draft an email to Sabine with subject top leads. It just did that and it's now saying that it's send an email. Oh. <laughs> Okay, it's actually, it does that too. Okay. No, it, went. Oh, it, it didn't send the email, uh, but just if, okay, never mind. Uh, but you get the uh, overall point of it. Uh, this is this is what uh, extending connectors to co-pilots uh, looks like. Uh, one uh, call to action here is, as I said, thank you for what you've already done for us. But if you could, one, continue to build these connectors, kind of pool in and contribute uh, to this uh, connector ecosystem. As you can see, it's it's being widely used. There are a few recommendations that we'll throw uh, starting New Year as to what are the few things that you can do better when you start building something for uh, co-pilots uh, with agents, like better descriptions and some other enhancements. So we'll provide that starting next year, and we'll come back and do a demo again here as well. Uh, that's one of the call to actions. Now I'll switch to, and the second one is like, 
the Snowflake connector is out there. Uh, there is a good amount of usage and people are building apps. So feel free to give it a spin, keep us grounded and, and give us feedback. Uh, over to Shepali uh, to take it away for some stats and some certification. Can I just take over the screen? Sure. Is it is it visible? It's loading. Let's wait for a while. There we go. We can see the screen. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So uh, thank you, Sabin and Nitin, for setting up the context for audience and demoing the power of power platform connectors. Now we'll shift the gaze a little bit and we'll try to understand the connector ecosystem through numbers and scale. So at present, as uh, Sabin mentioned, we have nearly 1400 connectors which are certified, which means these connectors are available for you out of the box to establish connectivity across different APIs. We also have 62,000 custom connectors which are there uh, that the, uh, the end users have actually tailored uh, to suit their requirements within their organizations. We have nearly 3000 pre-built connector templates which cater to vast variety of connectivity solutions within Power Automate and enable you to get started so no need to create a new connector all the time and we also have a whopping uh, 22 million customers across these different category categories leveraging these connectors and our data represents some top use connectors which are built by third party isvs microsoft and also are very um, a uh, vast community of developers. So we have Adobe, DocuSign, Encodian, and S3 connectors that top the list of ISV built connectors. We have SharePoint, Office 365, Excel, and Teams that tops the list of Microsoft built connectors. And we have connectors from uh, OpenAI, Telegram, and Hashify built by our community developers like Robin, Wong, and Troy. Now, uh, the real magic is that you can also contribute to the connectors ecosystem. As Sabin and Nitin mentioned, building connector is a very low code approach. Once you build these connectors, you can certify these connectors and get it listed in our catalog. And what certification does is it enables you to expand the reach of your API to the users of Power Platform and Copilot Studio. So Microsoft certifies the connectors by running thorough uh, technical, functional, and branding validations. And uh, the end users are uh, who are going to be consuming these connectors would be able to avail uh, low friction, friction connectivity with your service and also ensure uh, that they are getting like high success rate and reliability as well. Now, there are bonus benefits of certifying the connectors as well. You belong to the official list of nearly 1,400 connectors, and you get to unlock the marketing opportunities through various Microsoft channels. And you also get to drive the usage of your API through connector-based templates. And we are growing at a massive scale, and we are adding approximately 30% growth in connector ecosystem year on year. We have the largest con contribution, close to 50%, coming from our ISVs. 26% of these connectors are contributed from our fantastic community of developers, and we have another 25% contributed by Microsoft itself. We have invested the past year in continuously improving the certification and publishing of these connectors. And in build 2024, we moved 100% of our ISVs to mainstream marketplace, that is Partner Center. And this migration has enabled to bring down the certification timeline from months to a PAT of 48 hours. We are still on the journey to make this even more seamless, and we want to enable the similar experience for our community of independent publishers as well. We have a fantastic library on GitHub where we want you all to contribute to the connector ecosystem. And in the upcoming year, we would be investing heavily to scale our connector ecosystem, and we want to partner with you all in this journey. We will uh, continue to evangelize uh, with the community the new opportunities for improving the experience for building, certifying, and also publishing these connectors. We will be available on this channel on a monthly basis to share the latest updates in the connectors world, brainstorm new ideas, and also get your feedback to optimize further. So thank you so much, Vesa, for organizing this. And you can stay in touch with us and learn more about today's discussion by scanning the QR codes on the screen. These QR codes will route you to understand more about Snowflake Connector, our Power Platform GitHub, GitHub repository, and also certification and publishing uh, of these connectors. Thank you so much.